Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. And since I've only got 10 minutes, well, let's rock. Um, I'm Monique, and I'm here to talk about information architecture. Yes, this works. Um, and, well, what is it? That's the big question. Um, we all love WordPress, don't we? And I don't have to ask you why. It's a great CMS, and we're all great website builders, aren't we? But when I say I build websites, do I know what I'm building, actually? And do you? So, oh, what's going on? <laughs> This talk will be too short to tell you what information architecture is all about. But I'm on a mission, a mission towards a better structured web. And I need you, I need you to convince your clients that information architecture is part of that. That will be hard because information architecture is the underdog. It's not very sexy and it isn't visible. But that doesn't mean it isn't important. If you take a look at these skeletons, apparently they're the same. They have the same components. But when you want to go riding, on which animal would you do it? This book on information architecture, which I strongly recommend, has got this story, which made me realize that often I'm not too aware on what I'm building, and neither is my client. It goes like this. There's this minister who walks past a construction site. And when he walks past, he sees two guys laying bricks. And he asks the first guy, hey, man, what are you doing? The guy looks at him, a bit disturbed, so like, well, can't you see? I'm laying bricks. And he's like, oh, yeah, obvious. And he asks the second guy the same question, say, like, what are you doing? And the second guy ask, uh, answers, well, I'm building something great. I'm building a cathedral. And clearly impressed with the answer of the second guy, the minister goes home and he can't sleep and he's thinking about it. And he decides to go back the next day to ask this guy some more questions because he really inspired him. But when he gets to the construction site, only the first guy is there. And he goes like, oh, where, where's your partner? Where did he go? Because I want to ask him some more questions. And the guy looks at him while he's laying bricks and he says, oh, that fool. He thought we were building a cathedral, but actually, we're building a garage. So, when you're building a website, ask yourself the following question. Are you building a garage, or are you building a cathedral? Or are you just laying bricks? And when you do so, do you use the iter method? I think this is right. Or do you use some form of research or testing? Because remember, you are not your user. WordPress helps us with the basic of installing a CMS, but it doesn't and cannot help you with organized and good content. And that content needs to be findable and understandable for its users. So if we move on to the definition of information architecture, I'll go for the very short one because what you need to know is that it makes information findable and understandable. And to do so, we need some basic concepts of information architecture, which are information, of course, that needs structure, it needs to be organized, and it needs to be labeled. You probably all agree that findability is a critical success factor. And John Maeda said it earlier on, if a website can't be found, well, there's no use putting stuff on it. And the system will fail if the users can't find what they need. But when you design, don't design it just for the users. Use it for the organizations and the people managing the content as well. So why is it important? We suffer from major information overload. And however, this is not new. But you can imagine the growth of information has really sped up with the introduction of personal computers and the internet. 
And the findability techniques that were um, developed 15 years ago are not very effective today. And when we look at information environments like websites, there are not lifeless static constructs. Rather, there's a dynamic organic nature to them in both where information systems and the broader context exist. And when you look at these three circles of context, users, and content, you can use these in information architecture to um, find the balance and help them ask, uh, ask the questions you need to uh, develop a good information architecture. And when we talk about context, we talk about business or organizational context, and this is unique to each organization. And the websites you build, well, the information architecture reflects this unique context. And you don't want that to look like the context of your competitor, do you? Next, talking content, that's when we look at the ownership, who owns the content, in what format does it exist, how do we structure it, is there any metadata? In what volume does it exist? And do we need more volume in the future? And how dynamic is it? Will it grow old very quickly? And finally, what I think is most important are the users. And when we talk about users, remember, we talk about real people like you and me. It's not an abstract term. And these people have different information needs. I'd like to emphasize this. Remember, you are not your user. And what you think is right, well, your user might think different. So the final part of this talk is about how to do good information architecture. And I'm sorry, I don't have an answer to that. <laughs> but when you look into your latest WordPress projects, be critical. And not only if it's a large-scale project, but only also with smaller projects. And don't be tempted by your client to get into a rush and do concessions. Because most of your clients think information architecture is abstract, and they want to jump to the visual part of graphical design too quick. And when time and money are on a tight budget, well, you have to make choices of what to include. And again, these three circles will help you uh, do so. Good research means asking the right questions. And it helps your user answer four questions they have themselves. When they go to a website, they have a question like, am I in the right place? Does it have what I'm looking for? And if not, is there anything better or anything else? And after that, they ask, what do I do now? And it needs to be clear. User research is very important because, in the end, the users are the ultimate judges of your website. And you can do some usage analysis by checking on content performance, visitor information, and search analysis. And I think the relevancy plugin is a good way to find out what people are searching for on your website. And always be testing, even if you only do one test on a friend of your website, that's better than not testing at all. And you could use, for instance, this free card sorting method, which is online, but on optimal sort, or do a navigation stress test that you can find on uh, Instone's website. You have to overcome resistance as well, um, because people don't really want to spend time on information architecture. And common arguments are like, we don't have time or money, or we already know what you want. But if you dig into the information system really good, they will have a website that actually works, and it will save them time in the end. And finally, I think developing an information architecture strategy is important, because it can help expose gaps in business strategies and content collection. And it will force people to make choices they've thus far managed to avoid. So nearly there, I've collected some resources for you, and you can always check WordPress TV, check on information architecture to learn more. And my website has collected some resources as well. And I'd like to invite you to follow me on Twitter, because 
this is way too short, and I'd like to keep the conversation alive. So I've created this hashtag, WPIA. And um, yeah, hook me up. And to connect offline, I brought this swag, uh, the WAPU game, that you can play all together and discuss the benefits of WordPress we all um, have. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. That's it.